Hello, I'm Dr. Larry Bush. I'm an infectious disease specialist here in Palm Beach County and currently the president of the Palm Beach County Medical Society. So we thought we would put together this brief video just to uh, make some points about our current uh, coronavirus outbreak and answer some common sense questions and maybe help alleviate some fears and provide some advice for protection. So coronaviruses are a form of virus that are commonly around, humans get infected with them, and usually they cause uh, mild respiratory diseases that we would call the common cold. A so-called novel coronavirus is when a species gets mixed with animals and bats that also causes disease or resides in those animals and becomes one that's novel, in other words, one that's not infected humans before. And when it adapts and has the ability to infect humans, we've never been exposed to that particular strain of coronavirus, and that may easily infect us when it attaches to our respiratory tract. A lot of people obviously have become infected. As you know, the numbers throughout the world keep increasing every day, which is not un unexpected. And fortunately, the percent of people who get sick have mild disease or very undetectable disease. And some people, particularly the elderly and people who have underlying lung problems or other medical problems, like any other infection, are more likely to do poorly and perhaps die. Having said that, you wonder how accurate are the numbers of people who've been detected and how accurate are the numbers of people who are said to have died from this. The problem with that is you only know the number from the people you've tested and generally we only test people who have severe illness. So the actual numbers are unknown. But as of today, March 6, 2020, you can see from a country of 330 million people, there's been a very small amount, even though it's in the hundreds, of people who have tested positive in the United States. Now, obviously, there are many other people who are likely infected, but they have not been tested because they're not that ill. So the CDC, the government agency, has now supplied tests to the state laboratories who will do it at the request of the local laboratories. As of today, the commercial laboratories are not able to do testing. So what are the common symptoms? Well, people who are symptomatic generally have an upper respiratory tract infection symptom, which is a cough or a sore throat, but more severe disease would be cough, fever, and shortness of breath. And if that was the case, and if you were concerned about coronavirus, you could call your healthcare provider. They're likely not going to ask you to come to the office, but try to assess you over the phone. And if they thought it was indicated that you were ill enough, obviously they would send you to a healthcare facility in case you need medical care and testing. Otherwise, testing somebody who's going to be told to be quarantined at home just may add fear and the outcome is going to be the same. If they're not very ill, they should self-quarantine at home and do common sense things to stop the spread of viral diseases. Those would include touching your mouth and nose from surfaces that may be colonized or where organisms can live for some period of time, covering your mouth and nose when you sneeze. That would be a time when you may want to wear a mask in your house, but not necessarily wearing a mask when you go out if you're not ill just to protect yourself. And also watching for any signs or symptoms of becoming more ill, which would require an assessment and possibly other medical treatment. As of now, there are no viral medications like there are antibiotics for bacteria. There's no viral medication to treat this novel coronavirus that we call COVID-19. As of now, there's no vaccine to help prevent it. But keep in mind, there is an influenza vaccine and influenza causes a much larger amount of cases in this country with many more people dying and becoming ill from it, many more people winding up in the hospital. Having said that, almost a third of Americans who are advised to get a flu vaccine haven't. Now, some people say, I don't get the flu vaccine because it's dangerous. It's not dangerous. It may cause some mild side effects. Some people say, I don't get the flu vaccine because I got it last year and I got the flu anyway. Well, you only know if you got the flu if you're particularly tested for the flu. The problem is we often call a lot of respiratory diseases flus when truthfully they're flu-like. But the fact is that the flu vaccine is not totally protective. This year it's estimated that the flu vaccine protects around 50% of the people who get it. 
That doesn't mean it's not helpful. It means that some people who get the vaccine and do get the flu have a less severe disease. But as I said before, as of now, there's not a vaccine for coronavirus and hopefully in the future there will be. So what should one do? One shouldn't be afraid of going out in public places. One should not be afraid of wear, needing to wear a mask when they go out to protect themselves because the CDC and most knowledgeable healthcare providers would say that's not a common sense thing to do right now. If you think you're sick and you are worried about a coronavirus because of travel, exposure to somebody who's been diagnosed, or just because you've been reading and hearing a lot about it in the news, call your health provider and they will advise you. If you believe you're very ill and you don't have time for that, then obviously, like any other illness, you should present somewhere where you can be evaluated. Either your healthcare provider, an emergency room would be a good idea also. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, what we've done in the past with epidemics. Epidemics have been worldwide and are, have been something that historically have always occurred. And fortunately, we've always overcome that. Think about this. In the last hundred years, the world's population has tripled. If epidemics were something that were limiting this, we, we, those numbers would not have occurred. That does not mean you shouldn't take this serious. Obviously you should. What it means is common sense should prevail and fairer should be put on the side. And I'm sure the information that we're getting from the CDC is accurate. I know many of these people, they're honest, hardworking scientists who have your interests in mind. They stay apolitical. So questions, there'll be a lot of questions and answers coming out every day. I would use the local health department and the CDC's website, the Centers for Disease Control, has an excellent website. And if you go to the Centers for Disease Control Coronavirus Update on your internet server, there's an area for the public, there's an area for healthcare providers. The data is accurate, it's updated every day, and it makes a lot of sense to me, and hopefully it will to you. Thank you.